That's the lie, right? That's the lie vegans tell themselves. Peter Dinklage is no longer vegan. This comes from, well, I found this on Our Vegan, and it's from this video, this interview he did or podcast. But you don't eat, four. you don't eat meat. I think I've been to four. I, I don't, I, I do now. You know why? Because of Thrones, like it needs more promotion. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I started eating fish and chicken again on oh, that what? show. Because what? A vegetarian, uh, you, you see, the, 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 not see, sorry, it, 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 it's a, uh, because the vegetarian in Croatia yeah, is fish. impossible. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I was, you cannot do it. Yeah, really tired on set. And I was like, you know, my oh, dad, wow. my dad and I fished together and I missed fish. And mm. so, and you're right on the seaside there. So it's like, you got to get after it. And I said, I'll have a tuna steak. And it was just, that was it. You but I don't eat the, um, the cow or the pork or that stuff. It is kind of nice that now pescatarian is more known and seems to be more used. It used to be vegetarian fish. Fish was not meat. So unless someone said like specifically that I'm vegetarian, I don't eat fish. I don't know. I just assumed that if you said vegetarian, you ate fish. So to me, it seems like the, the typical things we hear when people start eating meat or animal products again, um, first, there's like a, a more maybe accepted excuse, right? Like, well, where I am right now, I don't have access to enough vegetarian options. But then almost always there's a follow up. My dad and I fished together and I missed fish. I'm not saying the follow up is always the real reason. But in this case, when you have a very high profile actor, it's a little hard to believe that he couldn't get his vegetarian options on set. It looks like they filmed King's Landing there from season two on. So maybe this was earlier in the show. Maybe he wasn't a high profile. I mean, I don't think anyone really knew Peter Dinklage before Game of Thrones. I did. There's a sweet little... Oh, uh, God, what's it called? Trade and Station? Station Agent? Really cute little indie film. Highly recommend. Nip Tuck also. Yes, I, I did watch that terrible show. So I don't want to say for sure he could have gotten the food he wanted. That's just an excuse. He really just wanted to go fishing with his dad. You know, he really just wanted to eat fish again. But it does make it, you know, maybe a little hard to believe, especially if he was vegetarian, which I think he's been vegetarian or was vegetarian for a long time and then went vegan. I mean, I don't know, you couldn't get protein and calories from like eggs. If you really thought you needed animal products, I don't know, man. Kind of seems like he just really wanted to eat some fish. The last hamburger I had was McDonald's cheeseburger drive through when I was 16. And I met a girl who was like this willowy vegetarian writer from the neighboring all girls school. Nothing ever happened because I was wearing my cloak. Um, <laughs> And uh, I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Vegetarian, what is that? And then me and my brother, Jersey, went through a drive through ordered McDonald's. I started eating a cheeseburger and I went, oh, I'm going to be a vegetarian after this, after mm. I finish this McDonald's cheeseburger. You got to go into rehab high. Wow. Yeah. And that was like 50 years ago. Did you get the attention of the girl? Did she yeah. acknowledge your sacrifice? I actually met her years and years and years later about... 15 years ago and she said oh i was just i was vegetarian for like six weeks <laughs> <laughs> and i went oh. it was like a lifetime for me <laughs> Dude. but thank you what was i just talking about with that you know effective activism tash peterson video like we don't really know what's going to spur people um to change their behavior right i mean for him it was just some girl i was with a guy for a short time and this was back like during my freaky raw all the fruit days. He obviously did not agree with what I was doing. He obviously thought it was silly. I remember him like pussily, that's a word now, trying to defend, I think it was oats and oatmeal. He's right, of course, oatmeal's healthy. I was insane. It's such an easy thing to defend, even someone with just basic understanding of nutrition, but he obviously wanted to be with me more than he wanted to, I don't know, be right, which is so, that's just not who I am. That's so odd to me. And it was such a huge turnoff because I could tell he definitely did not agree with what I was doing. I, I would have found it so much more attractive if he were just honest, but um, my shit's heat. What can I say? Or was <laughs> like decade and a half ago. He even would say like, yeah, I'd consider, I would consider eating 
you know, more fruit. Like, dude, dude. Rich people saying they can't get vegan food, especially amazing vegan food, is just dishonest. I mean, to be fair, he's saying it happened it, it, on a, you know, on a, a set. I'm sure people are going to link to all the amazing vegetarian <laughs> places in Croatia. Foods available in grocery stores. Like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I'm trying to be charitable, but yeah, it is a little bit hard to believe that he couldn't at least be vegetarian on set. And look, the reality is this was years ago. He do he doesn't live on set. He has chosen to continue to eat fish and check in. It's one thing to talk about availability and cost with like normal people like you and me. It's another thing when we're talking about multimillionaires. <laughs> Supposedly he's worth 25 million. He got 1.1 million per episode at some point. I don't know, you know, when when that was, how far along in the series, and who knows how much of this is liquid, you know, what he actually has access to. But certainly he has more money than 99% of us. Tinklage could afford to hire Sauce Stash to invent his very own plant-based meat called peat meat that only he was allowed to eat. Dude has fewer than zero excuses. <laughs> I was gonna say something like he could eat like only mock meats for every meal if he wanted to, just like beyond burger, you know, what are they like $2 a patty and it wouldn't make a dent in his bank account. But yeah, he could like have his own personal sauce stash, make him his own personal plant babies. Yeah, he could do that. I've been an extra on multiple sets before. There was always a vegan option for me to choose from. At minimum, it would be a salad I can assemble myself or cereal for breakfast. There's no way as a lead or supporting actor that he didn't have better options. I'm calling BS on that one. Where are you an extra? Probably in LA. I would imagine the options are going to be better there than in Croatia or some other like foreign shooting locations. And of course, are we talking about like beans and rice? Or are we talking about mock meats? Right? Because you can pretty much find beans and rice everywhere. So there's no excuse if you're talking about that. But you know, maybe you have someone who's been vegetarian for a short time, and they're used to meeting their like protein and satiety needs with like Beyond Burger type stuff. But again, Peter Dinklage, vegetarian for literally decades since he was 16 years old. So presumably he knows how to get plenty of calories and protein from not Beyond Burger, you know, from just regular old beans and rice. I think it's so much easier now to become a veg than uh, when I was young. Um, there's so many more organic markets, soy products, restaurants. That's the funny thing. People think it's more expensive and harder to find, but it, it truly is less expensive and very easy to find. I'm always saying don't trust vegan celebrities, but I'll admit this did sting a bit. I don't know why, but I did view him as more serious about it for some reason. I guess he just struck me as more intelligent and well-spoken than whatever pop star is on TikTok talking about the vegan diet. I wouldn't hurt a cat or a dog or a chicken or a cow, and I wouldn't ask someone else to hurt them for me. That's why I'm a vegetarian. But it's a good reminder I don't know him, just the persona he uses for interviews. I know many people that used to be vegan years ago and now they are not. It's not an influencer's only trend. I told this to someone on a thread in this sub and they went berserk like I was making things up. There are vegans who are really mad at phonolytics for posting that study years ago now, showing that like, look, the vast majority of people don't stay vegan, which is maybe one of the few things in life we don't really need a study for. Like we all know, we, we all know there are so few vegans in this world and we all have so many anecdotes. Like if you just combine them, it's clear the vast majority of people who dabble in veganism or even go vegan long-term for years, they stop at some point. Most of my family went vegan when being an environmentalist was trendy and literally none of them are now, not even vegetarian. Half of them make excuses about how unhealthy it is. I've been vegan for almost a decade, haven't dropped dead yet. And the other half just went straight back to mocking my rabbit food like it never happened, bizarre attitude. Humans get bored easily. It could simply be that they got bored of the taste of the food they were eating, which is clearly not a good excuse, but humans aren't often rational like that about moral choices. That is maybe the best comment I've ever seen regarding ex-veganism. I, I think that is 90% of it right there. Whenever vegans are like, oh, it's not a restrictive diet, you know, it's, a, and it's an abundance diet and like you get to be creative with food and okay, that's wonderful. If you really view it that way, that's wonderful. Come on, like, no, it's not. It is a restrictive diet. You are, uh, you're constantly saying no right? Whether you're actually saying no, like to people offering your, you food, or it's just kind of implied, right? You go to the grocery store. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is actually vegan. Cool. No, 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 no. This, this is definitely vegan. Why does this have milk in it? Fucking vegetarian ham at the Asian grocery store. Whey protein. I wish we could just educate people more, have 
more availability and that would be it. So many people would go and stay vegan because they know it's the right thing to do. And okay, maybe it's a little bit hard, but they know it's the right thing to do. And so that's it. They'll do it. But like, no, <laughs> no, they won't. Most of us will not. A lot of the people leaving comments on this thread will not stay vegan. I mean, there's a good chance the person leaving this comment there's a good chance they won't. I'm sure once you've been vegan for long enough, the numbers are different, right? You're, you're probably much less likely to stop. But still, I, I see videos all the time of like 10 year long vegan, seven year long vegan, eating meat for the first time in 10 years. We get bored and I think we get sick of saying no. You know, we, we just wanna be like our friends and like our coworkers and just, oh, there's food, yeah, I'll eat it. And sometimes ex-vegans will say that, but you know, I think, I think most people are not willing to admit that because it doesn't sound great, right? It really doesn't sound great to admit that, no, your morals didn't change. You still think it's wrong to eat meat. You still think it's wrong to eat animal byproducts to support factory farming. But like, man, really? Like every time I eat, Every time I eat, I got to like avoid all these things. I don't want to do that. I just want to go out to eat with my friends and get whatever they're getting. Not many people are going to be willing to admit to that kind of shallowness. I don't mean that in a like vegans are so much better than other people, but like, look, it is. It, it is shallow. It is, it is shallow to forgo your ideals so that your meals can be a little bit easier or have a bit more variety which let's be real, it's not a lot more variety. Most people eat like the same meals on rotation, right? You go to a different restaurant, but you're probably gonna get what pasta or chicken and something or pizza or a, some kind of sandwich with chicken or something. You know, it, like it's all basically the same shit. I suspect a lot of staying vegan has to do with Number one, who you surround yourself with. If surrounded by vegans, you're probably a lot more likely to stay vegan. You're not gonna feel as left out, right? My husband is vegan. That probably makes it easier for me to stay vegan. Also, I have this channel. That probably makes it easier for me to stay vegan. Who knows if I never started this channel, if I married just a typical like omnivore or something, I would love to say, no, I'd still be vegan, but like, who knows? And then also I suspect personality. Maybe it's just easier for us to say no. I've talked about this a lot, but like, I, I don't really have any issue being socially awkward. I don't really have any issue saying no. You know, I grew up without religion, so I've always been like kind of weird. You know, kids knew, oh, she doesn't believe in God, which in the South is like not normal. So I never even thought once like, oh, if I eat vegan, well, then I'm going to be weird. You know, and I'm going to be different from other people. That was never a concern for me, which is not normal <laughs> for a lot of people that's a chief concern. Point is, I would love to say we just need to educate people, show them slaughterhouse footage and that's it. But like, it's clearly not. I think it'll be once we have like cruelty-free meat products, whether that's clean meat or just better, like actually comparable vegan meats, comparable in taste and texture and price and availability, that's when we're gonna see changes because most people are not going to choose the cruel option, right? If you have two comparable things and one is cruel and one is not, they're gonna choose the one that's not, I hope. But until then, we're going to continue to see people get bored. It never makes sense to me that people will decide that animal abuse is okay now. Some people just get tired of feeling restricted, especially when another lifestyle is easier and not condemned. Holy crap, the second best, <laughs> second best comment. Yeah, no one's gonna condemn you for giving up veganism. In fact, a lot of people are gonna celebrate you, right? Not just carnivores, but regular people like, oh God, thank God they're done with that, right? We don't have to deal with this like awkwardness around dinner anymore. <laughs> While I fully intend to stay vegan, I can understand it. I know I'm gonna get downvoted, but it really does suck sometimes and you need to be really motivated to keep it up. I don't miss meat, eggs, or dairy at all, but the social aspect can be really hard sometimes. Like telling new friends that you can't eat the cookies they baked, not eating anything at work dinners you get invited to feeling isolated at family events and so on. Also, this is a pet peeve of mine, but vegan shoes are just really bad in my experience. My Doc Martens still squeak after two years. My 150 euro sneakers are starting to disintegrate after just one year, and I can't find good looking heels at all. Sure, if you're a very activist and minimalist kind of person, all of this isn't a problem. And personally, I'm too stubborn and conscious to stop being vegan, but I do understand why many people do. Hey, four upvotes, not downvoted to hell. People always get on to me for kind of like defending leather shoes. Certainly people who work and need like good quality boots and buying leather. Time and time again, I hear the vegan ones just don't last. Yeah, the cookie thing, new f telling new friends you can't eat the cookies they bake. This is, this is the... 
really the only reason I get kind of mad with the like you do you vegans who are really like plant based and they're just like, I, yeah, I'm vegan, but like, I don't care what you eat. Like, get out of here. No, <laughs> I hate to be like, you're not vegan, but like, you're not vegan has a specific definition. You just choose not to eat animal products. Please don't say part of veganism is not caring what other people eat. It's just not. You can say that, you know, you don't go out of your way to like make people feel bad about, about what they eat. Yeah, sure. I, I don't do that. I don't, don't go out of my way to, I don't know, insult people when they're eating or something like that. But I do care. And my point is connecting it to this, you know, new friends t telling them you can't eat what they baked. Like, I, I feel like so many people think veganism is just a diet and like, why should we care? And then you have these vegans saying, yeah, like we shouldn't care. No, I don't know where I'm going with that. In all likelihood, the, the friends just didn't know. I get agitated with the you do you type of shit from quote unquote vegans. It's annoying. My partner and I know one couple that was vegan for a long time. One of them stopped and went veg and started occasionally eating meat. And then the other one started eating meat. Then the other also stopped being vegan as well a few months later. And now they're both regularly eating dairy and meat again. Definitely happens a fair bit, especially if you're not in a super vegan friendly area for food or aren't vegan for the right reasons. So sad that so many just saw it as a trend rather than the lifestyle choice that's underpinned by compassion for animals and the environment. That's the lie, right? That's the lie vegans tell themselves that, oh, that person wasn't doing it for the right reasons. That's why they're no longer vegan. I am doing it for the right reasons. That's why I'll stay vegan. That's just not true. We don't know what his actual reasons are. Maybe it really is as simplistic as this girl said she was vegetarian and he went, whoa, cool. And then he was vegetarian for years because that's what worked for him. Maybe it's as simple as that. I doubt it. I think he did care. I think he believed it was wrong to eat animals, maybe still does. But yeah, th this is the lie we tell ourselves because it feels so much better. It would be so nice if that were true, right? If just everyone who's no, no longer vegan was only vegan because they thought they were going to be thin like freely, <laughs> right? They thought that, oh, this is a cool new trend. Only human on earth other than myself, who I can't imagine not being vegan anymore, is Earthling Ed. If he stopped being vegan, then nothing is real. And vegan gains, of course. Yeah, I'd be surprised by both of those. Uh, I always think of vegan zombie. That would shock me if vegan zombie were no longer vegan. Freely, honestly. Yeah, there are some that would genuinely surprise me. He misses fishing with his dad. Fish missed their dad because of his fishing. Oh, person one, what a thoughtful quote. Who said that? Person two, that was a hard cock to suck. Person one, okay, but who said the quote? Do fish actually have dads though? That they like see and care about? Like, hey, that's, that's my dad. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think a lot of vegans need to admit that it's hard. It sucks not being able to share in foods with your friends and families. It sucks not being able to pop into any old restaurant and get food. It sucks walking away from the food you grew up with. There's a reason why I meet way, way more. I tried being vegetarian slash vegan for a while people than I meet actual vegans. This leads some vegans to adopt this all or nothing mind frame where if someone isn't 100%, then they're just immoral hypocrites. I think it contributes to why some people try to go vegan, but then at the first failure say, I couldn't do it and go back to full omnivore. They think it's all or nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So many good comments on this thread. And that's something I'll say about Peter. Look, he was vegetarian for decades, vegan for a few years, I think. That is lives saved. I know it's it's a drop, not even a drop in the bucket compared to the total number of animals we torture and slaughter, but it is a difference. Like it, sh it should be applauded. I work with a lot of younger people. Anytime one of them tells me they're going vegan, happens every couple of months, I always support them and offer advice if they want it. But I also always say, don't be afraid of cheating or failing. If you decide to eat a piece of chicken one day, fine, eat the chicken, then promise to do better. And remember, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Even if you just end up eating less animal products, that still means you're reducing harm. Aww. Having been vegetarian for about 15 years and now vegan for another 10, it always amuses me that the most militant self-righteous, if you're not a pure vegan, you're an awful human being, people I meet are always the ones who six months later are now justifying why they eat meat again. Not always, again, vegan gains, but I think for a lot of people, they just, they can't keep up that level of, of energy, right? That level of like hate. You've got vegan gains, you've got Gary Yarofsky, like some can do it, but I think most people cannot. Or they get bored or find another cause to latch onto for six months. The only celeb that I put stock in for being vegan is Joaquin Phoenix. You mean the guy who took a role riding horses a second time after going on about how he regretted it the first time? Okay. Assuming that's true, I have no idea. I don't know his entire filmography and, and which films he's ridden horses in. And I'm certainly not pro riding horses. I think it's complicated. We don't really have much evidence on what riding does to horses' body because horse riders 
don't really care. But also like is is horse riding, is that what the hill we're going to die on? Horse riding? Horse riding once in a movie? I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just not vegan enough to care about something like that. Take his vegan powers away. Well, I mean, they leave as soon as you eat something not vegan. Fruit snacks had gelatin and you didn't know? Ah, you fucked. Peter Dinklage, same guy that railed against using people with dwarfism for dwarf roles, so now they just CGI'd the dwarfs in the new Snow White. Oh no, is that true? How did I miss that? Who fucking cares? Be vegan for yourself and stop worrying about others. I honestly don't care if someone is vegan or not. I live my life the way I do, and hopefully I will inspire people to change by living an example. Yes and no. Yes, in that you can't, you can't worry about things you can't control, right? You can't worry and be upset when people are no longer vegan. I mean, you can be like, oh, that sucks. You got to keep a distance, right? And I think understanding that so many people do give up veganism and understanding why it's a very like human thing, I think can help. But I honestly don't care if someone is vegan or not. I don't know. I can't get to that point. And I don't think I want to get to that point. Like I want to care. I do care. I want people to be vegan because that means fewer animals harmed. Like I want fewer animals to be harmed. I just feel people that go back to eating meat had a weak mindset and let the outside influences get to them. You got to stay solid. Not the way I would word that, but yes. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't say weak mindset, but um, again, I think it's a personality thing. And there are just some of us who are gifted or not gifted, depending on how you look at it, with the ability to not fucking care. To not care about missing out on foods and to not care about being socially awkward or missing out on being normal. It's so easy for me to say, well, just be more like that, everyone. But clearly most people are not like that. So there's probably just something, probably just something genetically about me that makes it easier for me. So I don't think it's very fair for me to just say, why can't you be more like me? I think it's better for us to acknowledge our strengths and our weaknesses and work within those. Be honest with yourself, right? Like if, if something is really hard or just like, there's some people, it just makes them feel sick. The idea of going out to eat and having like special requests, right? Or asking your friends, hey, like, can we go to this vegan friendly restaurant instead? For some people, that is just, that's like the worst thing they can think of. Again, it would just be really unfair of me to say, well, just get over it and do what's right. And it's probably not likely to happen. It's not likely for them to do that over and over and over again every time they go to eat. I think what makes more sense is to be a little bit more accommodating toward ourselves. If you know that's you, then maybe when you go out to eat, maybe you be more lax. And then you do that for a while, you know, being vegan at home and vegetarian or omnivore when you're out. And then maybe at some point you realize that like, hey, it's not that big of a deal. Like no one really cares. I can just order vegan while we're out. And like, hey, my friends actually like going to vegan restaurants. You know what I mean? Oh, look at this in the sidebar. Vegan milestone meat finally repulses me. I've been vegan for one year and almost four months. Wow, that's fast. For most of that time, meat consumption was something I was morally opposed to, but having been omni my whole life prior to the idea didn't physically irk me all that much. Had some very convincing chicken substitute. Don't recall the brand. To my memory, the texture was nigh on identical. And the more of it I ate, the more grossed out I felt. Not even a year and a half. That seems very fast to me, but every person's different. I'm just always amazed when people will say, oh, my husband couldn't even tell the dish I made was vegan. And they just use like Gardein beef crumbles. In what, in what world, in what world are Gardein beefless crumbles anything like beef? I did that, uh, what do you call it? That little taste test with the strips. I can't remember the word now, but, but I am uh, more sensitive to like bitter flavors, right? If you taste the bitter, you're one of those people, right? If you taste it and you taste anything, then you're more like normal taster, super taster. That's what it's called, super taster. And I suspect when it comes to certain like meat tastes and smells, I am more sensitive to that. And maybe that's because I've been vegan for a long time. I don't think so though, because even before I was vegan, I didn't like a lot of meat. There were certain tastes that were like so over the top, like that bloody beef taste. There is nothing vegan that compares to that, even impossible. I'm sorry, it does not. It has its own weird ass thing, but it does not have that beef flavor and smell. But like, yeah, I think most people just don't, maybe they just don't taste that. <laughs> I don't know. That said, smelling and being around meat did not repulse me for a long time. I've told this story before, but I told a partner, these, these veggie burgers, these vegan burgers in Memphis at this restaurant, vegans would always rave about them. And I was, I would kind of laugh because to me, it was obvious they were cooked on the same grill as the beef burgers because they had this like outer coating of like beefiness. And like, I think that's why they're good, y'all. I told partner this 
And he was just like, you like that? You like that taste? I was like, yeah, bro, it's good. <gasps> now, this is someone who has not had meat since he was like six years old. But yeah, he was like appalled that I still found meat tasty. But that was years ago now. And I have to say, oh my God, meat is disgusting. Looking at it, seeing it in grocery stores is disgusting. I don't even go in the meat aisles, even if there's something that I kind of want. Like, fuck that. No, I don't want it. I don't want to go over there. It's not worth it's not worth the bad vibes, you know. There is a, uh, what is it? Is it a Red Robin? Some some burger joint right next to the grocery store I shop at. Used to be the smell there, like, okay, whatever, it's meat. Now, ugh, when you can smell, when you smell the burgers and the bacon, it's fucking disgusting. So yeah, took about <laughs> 12 years, <laughs> 12 years of veganism, but uh, meat is finally disgusting to me. So yeah, Peter Dinklage is no longer vegan. This is not surprising because most of us at some point are no longer vegan. Hopefully we end up eating fewer animal products than your typical omnivore, but you know, that's not guaranteed. Now to end on a positive note, this is the future, or I should say this is not the future. Farming animals is not the future. And I don't just mean factory farming. I mean, farming animals is not the future. There is no way we can keep this up, whether you care about animals or not. Just from a feeding people and a planet health standpoint, we cannot continue to farm animals, except for on the tiniest, tiniest of scale. Food may look identical in the sense that when you look at like prepared food and food in grocery stores, it's like, what has changed? You know, a hundred years from now, like how much has really changed? That could be the case, but where that food comes from, I think is going to be vastly different. Whether that's amazingly designed vegan meats that are delicious and healthier, like we're going to have healthier meats. I am almost certain of that. Or it's some sort of lab grown clean meat that's also healthier. We can also make those healthier too. Things are going to be different and most importantly, better, far better for animals. Just not in my lifetime, which doesn't doesn't matter, you know, but it matters to me, right? <laughs> like for selfish reasons, like that fucking sucks. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you did enjoy it. I would love to know your thoughts. Please leave your comments down below and please do like and please do subscribe. And of course, thank you so much to all of my patrons and all of my members here on YouTube. I do post two exclusive videos for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog, which I just posted for this month for August. And then I also do a controversial, which I will have up in the next week or so. And that's just like whatever I want to talk about. That's just unrelated to veganism, nutrition, sustainability, all that kind of stuff. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. So it's not the ugliest, coolest <laughs> shirt you've ever seen. I love it so much. Thread up, of course. Partner just laughed when he saw it. <laughs>